Welcome to Quilts and Lace, class number three. This is one of the sewing uh, classes that we teach, part of the uh, one, two, three set that any computerized baby lock or brother sewing machine uh, can participate. We have some other classes like number four and five that are for the bigger machines, but the, uh, this one is one of those basic ones. And this one we have covered uh, patchwork quilting applique. Lots of kind of a quilting kind of techniques Again, I often say that I'm not going to teach you how to quilt. I'm teaching you just how to use some of those features in a machine to make a quilting and patchwork and applique easier. Also, in addition, I'll cover a little bit about the wing needle stitching and then also surface embellishment. Going to start in here with the piecing. Uh, because anytime when we have anyone coming in a sewing machine shop that is a quilter, First thing they ask on the new machines are, well, how do you get the perfect photo in seam? Well, I said that's the most common question. And we have multiple ways to do that one, because we could use the standard foot to move the needle position, or we could use quarter inch foot. We also have a variety of piecing stitches that are built in the machine. And those stitches, they often kind of have a little letter P beside it, P for piecing. Some machines we have two, which is the left and right, some of the ones we have three. And I'll be showing in the machine, on the line machine, how those stitches would work and how we find them in the machine. But if we use the standard J foot, we could then use some of those quilting uh, busy stitches right and left. Just the, that moves the little position to be on the right part on this foot. But many machines also come with a quarter inch foot. Some has a foot with a guide, some come with a without a guide. Some machines, we don't have a piecing foot with the machine, but it can be added for any of the computerized machines. So the important thing when you use the piecing foot is that the opening in here is very small. So we have to have the needle at the center or very, very close to the center. I'll show how we can also do scant quarter ins, moving the needle position a little bit. But we can't have it too much off because that hole is really designed to hold the fabric tightly in place. So I mentioned there are some stitches that have a letter P for piecing. We also have some stitches that has a Q at the bottom, and they are for quilting. So I'll go through, go through those ones a bit later on. Other very hand, hand, handy helper for the quilting and piecing is the straight stitch stitch blade. Some of the bigger machines, they already come with this accessory, but it can be added for many other models also. And it's not available for every model, but many of the ones that uh, it is available, uh, it is a special stitch blade. Because this blade, this, this <laughs> stitch blade has tiny little hole in the middle, which means we can only use needle at the center position. So this special stitch blade, when I put it on my machine, uh, my machine knows that it's there. That stitch blade has lots of little um, safeties in it. So when I plug it in, my machine turns into a straight stitch machine, meaning I can't do any zigzag, no decorative stitches. It's strictly for the straight stitch. But it is, it is a great one when you are doing lighter weight fabrics or then if you have piecing that you have lots of uh, sharp points. I will show that uh, stitch blade on my machine also live so you see how that looks like on the Lumine. I have uh, pointed my camera onto the screen of my machine. And when I turn the machine on, my default stitch I have set up to be the stitch 103, which is a straight stitch needle at the center, which is your normal construction seam. I use lots of it for just the clothing and home decor. The default stitch setting on this one, the length is two and a half millimeters. But when we do piecing, we normally like to have a little bit shorter stitch length, either two, uh, two or maybe even 1.8. Because we don't normally pack stitch other than certain blocks that we do like a Y seam that we would do pack stitching. Most times we just sew and then we have another seam crossing and that secures it. But close sewing, home decor, we often do pack stitching and the two and a half millimeter stitch length. But that on a piecing, the sort of stitch length is just a little bit more secure seam. So I could always change my uh, setting for this, um, for, the, uh, for this one. And if it is a stitch that I like to use, I can on several machines, I can save those settings to my machine's memory. Because that way, when I select some other stitch and I come back to this stitch, it will remember my saved settings. Depending on the machine, on the, all the machines with the larger 
screens, we can save up to five stitches, five settings for each utility stitch. So if I touch the retrieve, you see, I actually have saved on my machine three different settings. So I can save up to five settings for all those stitches. So that way I don't have to write little uh, post-it notes to remind, or remind me what settings I had used. I can just to save them on my machine. Well, definitely I could use this red stitch for my stitching, especially on a piece if I use some of these quarter inch feet where I want to have my needle at the center position. But this one's I could move my needle position a little bit. Those can't quarter inch. On my machine, I would use the left right shift. Some of the machine machines you may have two options, either using the width setting or the left right shift, or some machines we only have the width setting because the straight stitch doesn't have a width. That is the reason why several machines, uh, that one can also be used for moving the needle position. Um, on this one, if I use the left right shift on this stitch, it will move it quarter inch, a quarter millimeter at a time. So that will keep me uh, pretty much a scant quarter inch. If I want to do another uh, quarter inch, which is half an inch total, that I can do that also. Because that foot still would have enough space for that needle swing. Maybe that's another setting. Let me change the stitch length to two on that one. That could, could be my other setting I like to use, so I can save it on my machine's memory. Well, we also have multiple piecing stitches already in the machine. On that first group of stitches, I have stitches that has a letter P. And when I select one of those, it only tells me that that is a piecing stitch. So the, that is piecing stitches. On these piecing stitches, some of the things that have already been done, uh, the default stitch length on this one is two millimeters. And this spe specific one, when I select this one, it says it's a piece in stitch right, and it moves my needle position from center two millimeters off. That is designed to be used if I'm using standard J foot. I do, I'll be demonstrating the, on the second sample how to use that one. Some of the machines, we also have a piece in stitch middle. On this case, my stitch is locked, and I can't move it left or right. It is a very safe one to be used with the quarter inch foot because I wouldn't definitely accidentally uh, have a needle position that will break my needle. But then I can't do the scant quarter inch on that one. So again, multiple ways to do. So these three piecing stitches are on the group of the standard, or the first set of stitches, kind of basic sewing stitches. If I go onto the Q group, there's a, a Q for quilting, a group of stitches that uh, it's a kind of summary of several, several quilting stitches. But we also have uh, the piecing stitches there too. The Q01, that is the needle at the center position. Again, it is locked at the center, so I can't move my needle position. Really the same stitch at, as I had on the first group. But then we have the piecing stitch this right and left also on this group. Only difference between these two ones are that I can move my... Uh, my left right shift on this one uh, even more uh, more precisely. This one I have 57 needle positions on these two stitches. When I only have I think 27 needle positions or 29 needle positions on those other ones. So the other ones it moved quarter of a millimeter, this one it moves eighth of a millimeter. So those are the different options for my piecing stitches that I have already built in the machine. For the first sample, what we do on our hands-on class, we will make a little four patch. And I normally, we, when we do piecing, we do chain piecing. But in this class, we're going to do each of the three seams usually do using different kind of feet. And on this one, I like to use the one of those quarter inch feet. Well, we have multiple types. We have the ones that we have a guide on it, which I showed on an earlier one. And we also have feet that don't have a guide. And there's a brand new from Baby Lock that is the same one as that metal, but it is a clear foot. And it, they all have these markings, so I'll explain those markings a bit more. But then we have also a couple of different piecing feet that have the guides, and I'll show those ones on my live video. But the important thing on these quarter inch feet is that you'll use your needle at the center, or very close to center position. And then I have also later on some examples on how we can use some other quilt guides. 
And I put a picture on this one about the brand new food that Babylog has. It has a little built-in guide. This is really designed for 5H of our enzymes. It's a great one for garment sewing, but you can move this guide also closer. And if I move my little position then closer to edge, that could be used as another option. But I'll show you a couple other ways to do it also. There are just lots of different kinds of options available in the market. Uh, several machines, we have a guideline marker. Sometimes it is a real laser light, but sometimes it is a projection. On my machine, I have the Lumine. I will be showing it as a projection. So that is a great one to show uh, wh where your stitches will be going, give you extra, gu extra guidance. In addition, mo uh, several machines even come with an additional popping cover that has these lines, but it can be added for other machines also. If you have a popping cover with not, not all those marks, then you can also add one of those ones as well. Several of our machines, we have a guideline marker. Some of the models, it is a laser light, and some of the ones like Solaris and Lumine, it is a projection. But no matter which one it is, the symbol is the same. On my machine, it is on the top beside the, uh, the, where the utility stitch button is. On some of the ones, it is further down on, on the kind of left-hand side. It's the same symbol. So if I touch this one, if I had the laser light, that will then turn on my machine bed uh, and uh, it will be as a default, depending on the stitch, either left or needle at the center position. And I can move it with the little arrows either left or right. On this one, it is a projection and I will need to first turn it on. And in my machine, uh, the, the projection came on with those uh, guideline markers shown on, on my machine bed. Um, on my machine, I have two options for the main line. I can have it either straight line or I can have a dot. The dot is handy when I'm doing free motion quilting, so I see exactly where my needle would be going down. But I'll be stitching, so I'll be using the other uh, line. It also shows up on this uh, stitch runner beside on the, on the screen that we have the guideline marker turned on. This option is only available if you have purchased to upgrade one for your Solaris or Lumine. But any of the other ones, other Solaris and Lumine models, we also always have this uh, uh, the length. I can have my guideline marker la length or either the longest, medium or s short. If I'm doing uh, curved lines like an applique, the long line might be kind of confusing. So in that time, the, uh, making a uh, medium or so, uh, shorter line will make it uh, a little bit more visible. I can I can change the color of my guideline marker because depending on the fabric I'm using, sometimes the uh, green or white or red one will show better on depending on the fabric. And I can uh, move the position of the guideline marker. I can move it left, right. Uh, I can also move it a little bit further towards me. I can't go any negative, but I can go a little bit towards me if I need to. So that is on the main line. On the Solaris Illumine, we have a secondary one. We have a sub line. And this one, I can either have it turned off, which I had last time I had turned that second one off, so it remembered my settings. Um, if I wanted both of the lines, I, I will have my uh, straight line selected. And I can select the color of that one, that line as well. And in this one, I can change how far those two lines are apart. And I had set mine to be quarter inches. That it just again remembered my last uh, setting. Um, the settings on this one is normally in millimeters. But when I find one of those settings that is close to some of the common seam allowances, like quarter inch, half an inch, three eighths, it will also show that one. Well, then, in, instead of just having a straight line, like two straight lines as my guideline marker, I can also have a grid line. It's a really handy one when I'm stitching parallel lines, so um, uh, decorative stitches. Again, the same way I can move my spacing on those lines, and this one I happen to have it uh, half an inch apart. And then, the third option, I could have an angle. And it is a really great uh, feature when I'm doing... Uh, the, like a, uh, the seams that have a Y seam. So some of the quilt blocks, for instance, what I have on this one. There's a quilt block that is a dumpling block. I'm not sure which way I should be showing that one. But this one has a Y seam, which it means that I need to start stitching 
quarter inch way, those two seams meet. Well, with, when I put the guideline marker using that 60 degree angle, I can have the fabric lined up and then I know that I'll start stitching on the right position. Really, really great one. I've done this one uh, without uh, any markings on the fabric, just using the guideline marker and the 60, uh, 60 degree uh, angle line. Other angle lines that I have is a 45 degree. And this is another one that I have a 45 degree angles, and this is not the best sample. I had a better one. That's my first first tries, and I didn't get the last stitch in perfect. So I was uh, going to point the ones that are a little bit better. But we have a 45 degree, and then we also have a 90 degree. So if you have a 90 degree corner, the guideline marker from the angle will work on this one. And the last one was I can have it turned off. So it's a great uh, guide also for the stitching because uh, anytime I have an extra guide, it'll make uh, it'll make my stitching easier. Um, I have also put on my machine a, a cover, a popping cover that has markings. Now, depending on the machine, some of the ones may have come with the two, some may only have come with one, some may have come with three of these ones, different kinds of uh, popping covers. Uh, some of the ones don't have any markings. This one, I, I've been using this on my machine a lot because it has markings from the center needle position. We have a quarter inch and we have a five eighths of an inch for the garment sewing. And then there's also a little line on the left needle position, a little dotted line. Um, because we, we do have markings on a stitch plate also. The markings on, on my machine on the back, this back side in there, these ones are lined up with the stitch number one and two, which are the and needle at the left position. So yes, yes there is a mark or quarter inch also on that one. Uh, on my Lumine and also the same with Solaris, there's also a little line in the front of this one. These ones are then with the needle at the center position. So you kind of have to look those lines to see which stitch they are referring. To the stitch one that is needle at the left position or those stitches that are now in the needle at the center position. So multiple ways to get lines, because anytime if I have a guide, it makes me a little bit easier to sew. Yeah. I mentioned on my slide that uh, some of the machines come and some of the ones it is an optional accessory, but we can have a straight stitch stitch plate where, where the hole is just a tiny, tiny one. So that way I can do just a straight stitch needle at the center. And this one has little, uh, little uh, not extra notches, then when I plug it in, my machine has sensors that detects that this uh, straight stitch plate, plate is attached and it will only allow to me allow me to do straight stitch needle at the center. It is often paired with the uh, with the straight stitch foot. And, um, we may have actually come in a package that way. And on this one, uh, that will really give a great support for if I have a lightweight fabrics or if I have fabrics that have a little quilt, quilt pieces that have tiny points so they don't get suck, sucked into the bigger hole in our normal stitch plate. I could use this foot also for quarter inch because it has some of the markings. However, most times I would use some of the quarter inch feet. And I have list, uh, lined up a few of them on this one. We move those ones out of the way first. This is the quarter inch foot that came with my machine. It has a guide. And it is a bit longer guide. And I also have another quarter inch foot that has a guide, but it's a shorter guide. Lots of times I get the question, which one is better? Which one I like better? And I said, well, it really depends what I do. And it is a very personal preference. Sometimes when I have uh, uh, classes in a shop that we have multiple people on this class and we try different feet and then Maybe on one person on a class says, oh, I love this foot. I can't li live without. This is just the, uh, the best thing for my uh, getting my quarter in seams. On other person may say, oh, I hate that guide. I just don't really like the guide. I find it confusing. That is why we have different options. That's why I have three different uh, feet that I be using often when I do quarter in seams. Well, what is the really main difference on the guides other than the length? Or what's the benefit and what's the disadvantage? Of course, benefit is it's a longer guide, so it's more visible. Disadvantage is when it's longer, it, I could bend it easier also. Because if I push my fabric really hard against, I could move the guide. So the important, is, imp the important thing is that you just kind of gently guide it against the guide, not pushing it really hard. 
but it, it is a really nice visible guide. Other issue with this one, why sometimes people don't like it, is that this guide is a very sharp corner, when this other guide has much more rounded corner. If you have little doggy ears, this might get caught onto those doggy ears. This goes a little bit easier over. Or then other option is I could use the one without the guide. This foot is a very new foot from Baby Lock. It was introduced in the fall 2019. Um, there is an older foot, very common uh, on the first quarter inch feet that we had. Uh, that is exactly the same shape, but it is metal. This one is great because it, it is a, a clear foot. I can see through. And we have the same markings on all of these feet. This side of the uh, foot, we have eight of an inch distance. This one, we have a quarter inch distance. On this foot, those lines are quarter, uh, 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 eight of an inch part apart. And this one, we have the lines at eight of an inch. Well, what are those good for? On No matter which one of these feet I have, there's one of these lines will line up exactly where the needle goes in. And then sometimes we have a quilt block that you would need to start quarter inch after the, uh, the raw edges are. So in that case, if I have my fabric edge against that line, then I would be able to start it quarter inch from the edge. On the other option then also, if we had to stop quarter inch before the edge of the, uh, edge of the fabric, I could just line up that, that line onto that one and needle at the center position would then uh, let me stop exactly on the right spot. So great markings. Other of, uh, question I often get is that the, um, we'll say, well, I was using this foot and my seams are way wider than quarter inch and I can't move my needle position any further. Well, then I usually say that, how did you guide your fabric? Because if I guide my fabric at the side of the foot, that is gonna be much wider than quarter inch. We need to use the toe of the foot as a guide on this one. The reason why it's wider on this uh, base is that it will really cover nicely over the feet dogs. So we need to use the toe of the foot for the guide on for the quarter inch. The other side of this foot has an eighth of an inch. So if you have a little miniature pieces, miniature quilt or uh, toe clothes, anywhere you would need eighth of an inch seam allowance, you could use this side. And we have the same one I could use the eighth of an inch on this side. This foot I can use either side. I can use the a quarter inch from the edge of the guide in there, or I can put inside the toe that'll give me an eighth of an inch. So these feet have a great, great marking. So I love using these ones for my piecing. We can also do piecing using a standard J foot. Uh, but then we need to move that little position. The second sample I saw the rail fence, I'll be using this foot and the stitches that are made for getting a perfect quarter in se uh, seam with this one. Very often I see and uh, hear people using the end foot for piecing. I always have to say that, yeah, most likely you'll get the stitches, the machine will sew pretty nicely, but they really aren't the perfect stitches. Partly because, especially all our bigger machines, we have a uh, semi-automatic uh, tension system. I mean, we can still override it, but uh, the machine already detects the height of the fabric, which really is the height of the foot, so how high the foot sits. Well, when I look this foot and my standard safe foot, there's quite a bit difference on the height on these ones. So with this foot, my machine thinks that I have a heavier fabric and it may loosen my stitch tension a tiny bit. So your stitches may, no, may not look as perfect as they would look with the standard foot. So it, again, it is really designed for decorative stitching. I like to use it uh, on any of those tensor stitches that uh, I have a more thread built up so that it doesn't get stuck because the crew goes all the way underneath. But it is not the best foot for the uh, straight stitching. Another reason, because this underside has this bigger crew, so it doesn't give us good support. When you compare this uh, quarter inch feet, this is all flat. So it really gives much better support for the fabric. So again, the best stitching you will get any of these straight stitch feet and, uh, and even your standard zigzag foot. This one, I would just leave it for decorative stitching. One of my favorite topics is to talk about needles and threads. And we obviously run in our shop a class. It's a three hour class 
just about needles and threads because those ones are the often the causes for our sewing problems. Uh, the most impor important sewing classes I ever taken were from the needle and thread manufacturers because they explained most of the issues that I used to blame for machine fault actually were nothing to do with the machine. It was either the needle I was using or the thread I was using. So as for needles, we could use the ordinary universal needles for piecing and if you have normal quilting cotton, most likely those seams will be fine. But if, especially if you use batiks, these needles are not very sharp. They are kind of semi ball point, designed that you could also sew some knit fabrics with them and some woven. Uh, they're kind of like one of the needle edu educators said, but it's a uh, jack of all trades, master of none. My favorite needle is a microtex needle. Uh, this one in, in what I have is a uh, 7010, kind of very thin needle. It's a great one for heirloom sewing because I normally sew thin fabrics, batiks and silks. So it's a great needle for that one. Uh, mostly if I would be doing quilt piecing, my favorite is then the 8012 on a Microtex. Uh, it's a very, very sharp needle. And especially if you sew on batiks, you really want to have a sharp needle. Universal just has hard time going through that really, really densely woven fabric. This is one of my favorite needle uh, for most of my woven so fabric sewing. I get them on the backs of 100. So that is why the, my back is looks a bit different. Because needle is the most important part of the machine. They, they, uh, they do dull out and we need to replace them frequently. Well then as for threads, most times when we do quilt piecing, we use 100% cotton thread. Or then we also have a thread that is partially polyester. This is a very, very thin. This happened to be 80 weight. Really makes a beautiful seam uh, on a quilt piecing. Doesn't add any bulk onto it. It's a really great thread. It's a quilt well, select thread. Uh, this is another one I used a lot. It's the uh, Aurifil 50 weight cotton, Mid Medler 50 weight cotton. Then I have some of the superior threads, 50 weight cotton on this one. and. On the samples that I've been using on this uh, class demonstrations, I put a little bit of a different color thread, hoping that it would show better on my stitching. So this one is a Madeira Cotona 50 weight. Usually a little bit thinner thread, because if you put really thick thread in a seam, that seam gets a little bit bulkier. So it's just much easier to keep your perfect quarter in seam allowances and, uh, and the uh, quilt blocks line up better together when we use thinner thread. So good needle, good thread, that is the best way to go. I put on my machine uh, the, that new quarter inch foot, the clear foot, but that's the one without any guides. And one of the things I often get uh, comments was that uh, people were using this foot and they said that, well, when I put my pressure foot down and I use the side of the foot as my, uh, my guide, my stitch is a lot wider than quarter inch. And I said, well, don't use the side of the foot uh, as a guide on this, this specific foot. Because the reason why the foot is wider on the sides is that that way it will line up perfectly with the feet dogs. But if I put that one uh, on, the, on the toe, so there's like the narrower toe on this foot. So when I line up this uh, um, raw edge with the toe, that is when I get that quarter inch. So the, the side of the foot is as wider so that will give me uh, will kind of cover the feet dogs. The other toe is eight one inch away from the side. So if I'm doing miniature, so doll clothing, and I want to have an eight one inch seam allowance, I could use this other toe for that one. On some of these other feet, I would just use the inside of this uh, this toe. So we we have lots of markings on this uh, quarter inch feet. So I'm going to line up mine so that I, I have uh, the toe of the foot lined up with my right side of the uh, row edges of the two pieces of fabric. And also I have some other markings on the side. So if I put that marking where the stitches would start, if I put that one right at the edge of the fabric, I'll start stitching right at the edge. So let me go and uh, go ahead and finish this seam. Other things that does help also for me that I could have used this one a little extra guidance. Plus also uh, on my machine, I have the uh, guideline marker. So let me turn that one on. So that will give me a little bit of extra guidance also. 
and let me put on other marker there too so I'll put a different color for that one so I'll do the next piece using also those ones as a little guide on quilt piecing we often continued for the next piece without cutting the threads between just to do a chain piecing but in this time I'm going to be uh, changing the feet so I will cut between and I have a multifunction foot pedal on my machine so I just use my feet to cut my threads so like look my no hands so here's my first stitch I think I got pretty good uh, quarter in seam on that so let me take this foot off and I will be using the one with the guide, the one that came with my machine. So let me use that one. Here we go and get that thread under. So on this one, now when I put my raw edges against and I can just line up my uh, pressure foot. I'm using the hand lever here. I could use my pattern or I could use my lever, knee lever. Most times I would be using my knee lever. But because my camera is at the moment kind of in front of it, so if I, that's a knee lever, I'm going to move the camera. So I'm just going to use the manual lever this time. But now I also had my guideline marker set up. So here's my stitching line. And this is also this one. I have two guideline markers. So I can even use this one as my extra guide. So now I can be stitching on this seam. Again, I'm going to cut the threads so here's my other seam I think I got them pretty good so let's then do a four pads and I will take the next foot and this is the foot that has the uh, guide also but it has it's a little bit shorter guide the reason I want to use that one for this part is that the, I'm going over a seam so uh, this foot would work really good for that purpose but this wouldn't maybe so much because this one has that little edge that could possibly catch easier. I would have to lift my pressure foot to get over that one. So it's just again, depending a little bit what I do. So it, um, I'm really going on the side, so this most likely would work fine. But sometimes you have doggy ears and it could get caught. So I just finger press this towards the darker side. And I'll be putting these ones right sides together. And I want to nestle those seams. So that way uh, when I have those nestled and then if possible, I usually like to have my bottom side of the fabric, the seam to go in towards me because that way I, the feed dogs cannot keep it flat this way. It doesn't flip over and the top side I can control it, but also it kind of locks in place. So let me line up these ones. And my, my knee want to call for the use the knee lever. <laughs> I had to watch, tell myself, do not use the knee lever because you're going to move the camera. And I don't always do the best sewing in a camera. I'm a little bit on the side. So now I'm going to go and do this seam. This foot actually has a little bit bigger opening than any of these others. So I could move my little position even more if I need it. I only had moved it uh, that quarter of a, a millimeter that will give me that scant quarter inch. Again, I'm just using the guide as a foot, uh, guide of the foot as a guide, and I'm going over the seam. And I didn't do any back stitching, all I did, I just went to the edge and then cut the threads. And because of that, I was just going to side on, then also this uh, guide was kind of rounded, it, it, I didn't, it didn't get caught, and my uh, fabric edges didn't flip. And I think I got pretty good matching point on this one and have to remember I'm not a quilter but these tools just make make me look like I know what I'm doing okay let me show how I will be using this guideline marker when I have uh, corners like this in the stumbling block uh, quilt block where I started from a quarter inch at the from the, from the beginning of the seam so and also I even stop quarter inch after so that way I will have perfectly nice corners on this uh, Y seams in the machine. Um, I was using earlier a little, I was going to try to use a fabric, but it was very hard to see this color fabric on uh, in the camera. I could see it fine when I was stitching, but the camera doesn't always pick up as, as, good, as good. So I'm, I just picked up two pieces of white fabric and I have set my guideline marker for that 60 degree angle. So when I lay my fabric underneath, let me lower the pressure foot there. So now uh, when I lay my fabric so that uh, 
the green line that was my outside edge is lined up with my raw edges on both sides. My red line is uh, the stitching line. So that way now I am starting at quarter inch from the side on the 60 degree angle seam as, as well as on this one. Most times in a quilt piecing we don't lock the stitches because we sew over on other. But in a Y seam you kind of had to lock this one. So I could either use the stitch in place pattern on my machine, which is the little circle one on my machine bed. Or other option is I would do one stitch forward and touch it to do one stitch backwards. And then I will continue going forward. So all I'm doing is I'm just using those kites on my machine on a, on a, on a kite line marker or even the other middle markings on my stitch blade. So now I'm approaching at the end. So if I want to leave also a quarter inch edge from the, on this, so I stopped quarter inch before. On the straight seam, I could be using, or straight corners, I could be using the markings in the foot or even on some of these markings on the stitch blade. But because this is an angle, so I would need to have my stitching line to be stopped quarter inch before. Well, my guideline marker is further out, but I can pretty much use this one as a guide too because there's a quarter inch between. So when I stop stitching, when my line, uh, this uh, red line is quarter inch, about the same distance that would be there, I stopped on that point. So I'll do maybe a couple more stitches, maybe one more stitch. So now I have stopped quarter inch before the seam. So that other guide line marker kind of helped me to guide uh, the distance also on this end. And again, I would maybe do one or two stitches back, cut my threads. So now I had started quarter inch uh, before and I stopped quarter inch after. Yeah, I know I used a uh, kind of an upholstery uh, sample that had been some stitched over, but I, I was looking for fabric that showed best on the camera. But that is way I can very easily do these kind of a quilt blocks. This, this little wall hanging that was done on one of the machine clubs when we were demonstrating the, these guideline markers. So here are three of those um, blocks that I just had one as a sample. First zone, so that is where I used the 60 degree. And then they all have then a point also in the middle, so it was used on that one as well. So that made it's really easy to make these kind of a Y seams. And then finally, I also used a 45 degree on uh, for this uh, my third corners on the on the binding so those uh, tools those guideline markers on the solaris and lumine are just amazing for the second sample i'll be doing a little rail fence and on this one i just wanted to use some other kind of a way to do a quarter in seam and this one would be to use the using the standard J foot the zigzag foot if i just use my needle at the center my seam is going to be way wider we need to move the needle position so that uh, it is a little bit further towards the right. And we could just manually move that needle position to, uh, from the 3.5 position to 5.5. But we also have all the computerized machines. We have stitches that are already built on, on those ones. And they are, uh, there are two versions of it. There's a piece in stitch left and piece in stitch right. And then some of the bigger machines also we have the one in the center that really is not designed for this technique. Um, but those a piece in stitch right, that will, when I select that stitch, my needle will automatically move onto that position. And in addition also, those stitches have already built in short, uh, shorter stitch length, for two millimeters rather than the standard two and a half. Of course, I can always take a standard straight stitch and move my needle position and, and change my uh, stitch length. But those are already built on, on these stitches. And then I can also have a picture on a little additional seam guide. That is another option that you could also use as an extra guidance. And I'll demo that one later on. So we'll be making a little rail fence block that we'll be, I will be using later on for quilting sample as well. But uh, this one I will use a standard J foot and then those built in stitches. I have set my machine now using this standard foot. So let me move my fabric so that I'll be right on the side of the foot because the J foot is a bit wider than my quarter inch seam would be if I was needle at the center position but this time my needle is a little bit on the left uh, from the needle position so my guideline marker was currently lined up with needle at the center position so they look like they're way off 
So what I need to do in this case, I just need to move my guideline marker. Uh, I'm just shifting it at two millimeters. So now my guideline marker is lined up uh, with my needle on this red mark. And then uh, the notice I'm a little bit still off. So let me move. There we have it. So now when I'm used to the side of the foot and even the little marker, that will help me to get the perfect quarter in seam using the standard safe foot. And this is kind of a bit of a longer seam, so let me go a little bit faster. Again, it's kind of funny to show. So, so in a machine when you uh, when when you have a machine between uh, when you have a camera between your legs, <laughs> so well, not too bad. So here is my first seam. So that was using the uh, the standard J foot with the piece in stitch, which is lined up for the right side. So let me put on other piece of fabric, and then we'll do do a quarter in seam on this one so that we have a little rail fence that we can later use this one for quilting also. So again, I could line up my fabric edges with the guideline marker and the side of the foot for using this. Let me show you the other stitch. The one that, so let me actually turn, I'm going to turn the guideline marker off at the moment and I will pick up the piece in stitch that is lined up for the right side. It's a little bit awkward sometimes to sew. Uh, normally, no, I would not most likely use this side of the foot, but if you have a seam that you can't get onto the, whatever reason it's more convenient, that is some other stitch that has been filled for the machine. And sorry, I kicked the camera when I was trying to line up the fabric. So now I'm using the right, sorry, the left side of the foot uh, for the guide, guiding on this one. Again, this kind of feels a bit awkward to sew it on this side but that again it's just another option we have I just want to show you both both ones in the camera so that was just another way to get the quarter in seam on my machine and now I have a rail fence, a rail fence block I'll go and press this one and then we go on to the quilting samples let me show you some other tools there are a lot of different kinds of guides that can be used to help to keep our quarter in seam there are a number of ones that you can either stick onto your stitch plate or you could also uh, screw onto the stitch plate. This is a brother and baby lock seam guide. And several of the machines, we have a little hole on our stitch plate that allows me to put the seam guide. This one is adjustable seam guide, so I can use different uh, needle positions or uh, seam positions on this one. So I have left my machine on a quarter inch seam on the side of the foot as a guide. So I could also use this as a key little extra guidance. So that way is when I move my guide so that it's quarter inch from the where my needle is. So that will give me an extra little uh, way to get my quarter inch seam also in the machine. So that is a very handy guide. Again, can be used all kinds of different needle positions and it just screws onto the little hole in the stitch plate. Most machines have that little hole. Some of the very basic uh, brother and baby lock machines may not have this one in the stitch plate. So check for that one before purchasing that guide. Here's another kind of a seam guide that is quite handy one. Uh, that is something that I got for myself. It's from the Clover Nancy Seaman ones. And as she shows on this uh, picture, we could really easily use these ones to have even a longer guide because I can either use one of these or they will lock together to have one really long guide. So either way, and they even come with a little um, guide, little, uh, guide that I can put my needle positions and make sure that I get the seam allowance I need to. So I just, I currently have my machine set up for that quarter in seam that is using the standard J foot. So I put my edge of the fabric against my my foot so let me just put this little guide so if I put my guideline right there and then I could put my other one also this come with the little uh, plastic so it's just remove that one don't throw them away because we can put them back and we'll keep all the lint from going away from going into it so see now this gives me a really nice long guide so I can just use this as my guide so these are really, really handy because they stick onto your machine bed. You can also get magnetic ones, but, uh, but then like this one doesn't matter what kind of, I, even on my sewing table that uh, I have, I can stick them onto it. They don't leave any marks, they, they do just come off. And then I can put this uh, little plastic back to uh, cover it when, for the next time. 
Well, I like, like all kinds of notions and tools. They're not gadgets. Nancy Seaman always said that gadget is a tool that doesn't work. So I don't call them gadget. I say I call them notions or tools. Because depending on what I do, again, sometimes I use different ones. So I like to have different options. Again, really doesn't matter which one of these feet I would be using. But here's some other cool guy that I had done one time an entire quilt quite many years ago. So this is a, a little guide. It's a generic guide. It's just um, it's not made for any specific brand. Mine is the shorter one. That was the original that they came up. There's also a longer one. So what these are designed is to be used even with your standard zigzag foot. So I have a little piece of uh, kind of uh, shiny uh, paper that gives that sticky uh, uh, so that there's not that I get caught on my packaging. So what I'm going to do is the hole, I'm going to line the hole where my uh, hole in the stitch plate is. And then I will line up that center. And I have all these extra markings on my uh, popping cover and my stitch plate. I could also use the guideline marker for that one too, to make sure that it's all straight. So I think I'm pretty good and I will lower my pressure foot on top. I think I've got that one pretty well lined up. So now I have a little bit longer guide, which is handy whenever you go in on maybe doing a, a half square triangles. Of course, with the machines with the guideline marker, we can do the same thing. But that is just another option that if you have one that doesn't have these guideline markers. So if I wanted to stitch right from the point to point, it has even little marks. So if I line up my fabric edge on that one, I would be sewing right in the middle. Great one for when you are joining binding together. But if I wanted to do half square triangles out of this one, in that case, I would want to have my quarter inch line lined up from point to point. And the important thing is that you don't put your fabric on top. It goes underneath. And when I first time used this one, it took me a little bit getting used to do, uh, put my fabric underneath. So I'm just going to flip it up. And I'm going to line up that dotted line. And I'm trying to line it up from the top also. So let me just get on there that I'll have it lined up. Kind of hard to do when again, I'm sitting on the side a bit. So let me move the side. There we go. So now I have lined up the uh, little line on the, on the side against the edge of the uh, quilt block and then my dotted line. So I'll be stitching on this one quarter inch from the center. Other option, I could have marked the center, use the quarter inch foot, so both sides. But this one's going to save that mark, uh, marking. Again, same way I could have done that with the guideline marker. So now important thing is when I'm stitching is that I'm not looking the needle. I'm looking this guidelines, keeping that dotted line on a point. So here's my one seam. And then I would uh, flip my fabric and do the same thing on the other side. So again, I'm lining up that dotted line on those points. points. I think I'm pretty close there. And then I will start stitching. I This time, notice I didn't even lower my pressure foot. On my machine, uh, I have a feature that uh, I turned on on the settings that uh, my pressure foot went down automatically. So that is something on the Solaris and uh, Lumine. We have that feature available. So now I've shown two lines that I could go and cut between to get two quarter square triangles. I could also use this one just as a, um, as a stitching for if I wanted to sew uh, on a, just a quarter inch seam from the side and that will give me a little bit longer guide. So again, just want to show a couple tools because there are just so many different ones. I like to try different ones and depending what I do, I, I may use different ones for different techniques. And there are plenty more, but that was just a few of the ones that I have on my stash.